Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the postural deviations in the anterior posterior view for the lower limb. We will cover the ankle joint and then the knee joint. Okay. So first under the ankle joint, we will see what is pes planus and pes cavus. Okay. Also known as the flat foot and the high arched foot. And then at the knee, we will see what is genu valgum and varum. Now, I've covered these topics under ankle biomechanics and knee biomechanics separately. But in this video, we will focus more on the observation part of it. Okay. So first starting with the pes planus, that is the flat foot. What happens over here is the calcaneum goes for eversion. Now, to get you some better perspective, I drew this diagram. So over here, if you can see the foot from the posterior view, you'll see that the calf is coming right from here top and your TA is over here like this correct and your calcaneum is over here correct so if you can see it is forming this angle which is basically putting your calcaneum outward correct your calcaneum which is there over here the circular part is going in this direction correct this is the lateral part of your foot and this is the medial part. So your calcaneum is going for eversion. And this is commonly seen in your flat foot. That's how you can determine a flat foot in a posterior view. Okay. Apart from that anterior view, you can't really comment much on the foot. But posterior view, you can see a lot. So this calcaneum, as you can see, goes for eversion. And this is your tibia and fibula, correct? It goes laterally outward. It goes for eversion and your navicle drops over here. If you see it from the sideways, what happens is calcaneum goes over here, talus goes this way and the navicle drops. And this is commonly seen in a flat foot. So over here I mentioned the calcaneal eversion happens along with there is reduction or absence of your medial arch, correct the medial arch which is formed which you can see over here. This is the medial arch that we are talking about, right? This medial arch is lost because the calcaneum goes for eversion and the navicle drops. If you want to know more about the mechanics, you can go check out my video on ankle joint supination pronation twist. That will give you a way better idea on this topic. Okay. So visually when we see the calcaneum goes for eversion, the navicle drops and there are two types of flat foot that we see. There is a rigid and there is a flexible one. In rigid, what happens is that it is a structural problem which is present at weight bearing. When you are bearing your weight on the ground, there will be a flat foot. And even when you are non weight bearing, okay, non weight bearing, there will be a flat foot. Whereas a flexible one is more of a functional flat foot. That means when you are weight bearing, that is the only time your navicle will drop. But otherwise, if you see the foot in the non weight bearing position, it will have the nice arch and it will look totally normal, right? So these are the two types of flat foot that can be seen. Going on to the other side, there is the calcaneal inversion that can happen. That is the other side of the story. Basically, calcaneum will go for too much of inversion. So if I want to draw it over here, this is your foot, correct? This is the medial side, toe over here, correct? And the TA will be coming from top and the calcaneum like this. So calcaneum will go for inversion this time, not eversion, inversion. So this angle will be this way. Before it was this way, correct? Let me highlight it. So as I'm highlighting, you can see this is the calcaneal eversion where the calcaneum goes outward. And when the calcaneum goes inward, it is calcaneal inversion. So when this happens, there is basically medial arch increase, correct? This exactly opposite will happen. This will go in, navicle will go too high and this will form a very rigid foot that is unable to adapt to different surfaces, correct? And this will cause your foot to be stuck in a supinated position. Now again, supination, pronation, these are very complex terms that I'm using. And for that, you have to be 
clear with the ankle biomechanics you can always go and check out i'll link it over here on top so once your foot is stuck in that supination position it is a very rigid foot it's something like this it is so rigid that it cannot absorb the forces whereas flat foot is too flail correct and there also there won't be proper force absorption so the best balance need to be present in that ankle which is lost and that's it and that is why it is called as a postural deviation either there is a pes planus a flat foot or a pes cavus a high arch foot so another thing i wanted to mention over here is there is a way to determine if your foot is having the right amount of arch and this is done by a fees line method where you'll mark the medial malleolus over here and then the first metatarsal prominence and then you'll join the line okay you'll join this line and then you'll see where the navicule over here where it falls is it above the fees line below the fees line and how it changes with weight bearing and non weight bearing and that gives you a better idea for diagnosing a flat foot so that was about your ankle now let's move on to the knee in the knee there is genu valgum and genu varum correct valgum is also called as the knock knees where it is seen in children at age of around 2 to 6 years which is normally seen okay that is not a problem but this can persist as you grow old and that can increase external torque that is a twisting force that is present on your knee with tensile stresses on the medial structure and compressive forces on the lateral structure this is compressive force and this is tensile force correct coming together is compressive so if you can see over here the compressive forces will be present in the lateral compartment of the knee and in the medial compartment there will be distractive or tensile forces that will be seen also because your knee is collapsing inward there are chances of your patella over here to get displaced laterally because whole knee is coming in patella might get displaced laterally and most of these conditions are mostly caused because of weak abductors right the abductors muscles of your hip which are very important stabilizers if they are weak this knee can go for inward collapse and this is commonly seen in squats too but this is not the only reason sometimes it can happen also in osteoarthritis uh, for which a primary reason can be again abductor weakness in the first place so always correlate again how i told with mmt of abductors and that's how you'll get a better idea going on to the next one that is the varum genu varum that is also called as the bow leg which is seen in around 3 to 4 years of children and this causes cortical thickening and compression in the medial region exactly opposite of valgum it will cause compression in the medial aspect and distraction in the lateral aspect this is commonly seen in osteoarthritis vitamin d deficiency renal rickets and osteochondritis now over here you might get confused how to remember valgum what is which is valgum and which is varum right so i have a very simple technique to remember i have mentioned this in my previous videos also i think that was my second video which i had shot so valgum over here gum right so a gum you can imagine over here which is sticking both the knees together right so that is genu valgum and over here it's a rum so you can imagine a rum bottle okay rum bottle which is present between your knees and that is why that bow leg knee is present over here okay so genu valgum and varum that's how you remember which one is which and this happens due to abductor weakness most mostly and varum occurs mostly in osteoarthritis vitamin c deficiency and conditions like osteochondritis okay so with that we finished this short topic we saw how calcaneal eversion drops the navicule and causes a flat foot and calcaneal eversion takes the navicule to up makes the foot very rigid and causes a pes cavus or a high arch foot then we saw genu valgum that is the knock knees and genu varum that is the bow leg knees correct bow leg because it is in this direction it is somewhat like this bow correct bow legs and this is knock knock knees so with that we finish up this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video